and welcome to this short webinar on the onboarding program of the year. Having worked with one of our clients um, over the past um, couple of years, we put together a submission for the onboarding program of the year category at the annual learning awards and were surprised and in fact delighted with the fact that we secured and won a bronze medal. Well, it gives us a, a goal, and uh, we're going to keep going till we actually get that gold medal. Um, but I thought uh, a perfect way to sort of start this webinar is with the end insight. Um, this particular, in this particular webinar, we will take you through a journey and talk you through a story of how we work with one of our clients to develop this award-winning sort of program. There was a large amount of work that we did, but also a, a massive amount of elements that our clients worked on sort of changed the mind, their mindsets to graduate and talent onboarding, and also the questions that they raised on the status quo. So with over 400 submissions from individuals and organizations across the world, winners were selected very carefully, and they had to demonstrate evidence of innovation, business impact, cost effectiveness, and there had to be very strong endorsements from different stakeholders, but more importantly, their graduates. We needed to answer that question. Why do we deserve this award? In the short webinar, we will review the anatomy of this um, program uh, and how the organization, and then we perhaps look at the best practices that assimilated these employees um, into the organization through various elements such as collaboration, community, training, coaching, and innovation. We'll show you how this best-in-class program starts onboarding individuals through the initial stages of campus relations through to a systematic program for the first year of work. And, and, this, included, um, and this will include some of the standout facets uh, that was recognized not only by the, the people who provided the award, but more importantly, recognized by the individuals who attended the program. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into it. And, and perhaps uh, another thing, keeping the end in sight, let's have a look at some of the results. Oh, uh, let me rephrase that. Let's look at some of the amazing results. Um, the, the individual or the graduate feedback was very important and one of the key elements that we sort of picked up from the program in comparison to previous years was that 98% of the graduates rated the program as excellent, very good or good. 96%, um, 94%, 88% of strong performance overall for all stakeholders. But more importantly were some of the metrics right at the bottom, uh, which demonstrated business results. Now, the entire thing with coming up with uh, or challenging the program and rethinking its approach and, and change shifting mindsets um, was not just about uh, what you would say. Um, it wasn't about reinvesting in it. It was thinking about how could we reutilize that budget in a smart and efficient way. And as a result of sort of doing that, we managed to achieve 40% cost savings in comparison to the previous year. And then you have the business results, the higher retention, higher performance, higher engagement. There was reported high levels of satisfaction and community connectivity in post-program surveys. There was higher performance in terms of feedback from the desk as to the, the level of confidence and impact that the class of 2015 was generating in comparison to prior, uh, prior cohorts. And there was that level of engagement. There was emotional commitment and this entrepreneurial energy that was um, sort of observed at much higher than previous years. All right, so now that I've sort of talk, um, started with the end, um, let's perhaps go right to the beginning. Um, like many organizations, our client was facing a talent gap. The grain of the industry has you know, been documented and spoken about since 2013. So the organization had to take uh, a couple of steps to, to bridge that gap. With, and as a result, um, the first things that they started to look at was overalling their entire campus recruitment strategy. However, being uh, a large organization, uh, they were a bit of an oil tanker. Uh, it took quite a lot of time to turn this uh, ship. And at the same time, the pace at which they were uh, moving, they had the end in sight, but it did take some time for them to sort of get it right 
and, and to move a lot more quicker. Change is, is a challenge with large organizations, and we sort of recognize that. Um, but eventually, the results started to pour in. The numbers were phenomenal. Campus recruitment was working brilliantly. Their on-campus presence was fantastic. It was not only uh, bringing in new graduates, it was bringing in and attracting talent, which was a sort of a key element. So the next part of the, the sort of decision-making process was, great, we've ticked that box, we've got campus recruitment, thumbs up for all of us, but what now? How do we onboard these new graduates in a way that helps them to, to become successful from day one? How do we deliver on the promises that we made to these individuals and all their campus recruitment? And we as an organization, the messages we delivered, it, delivered through campus recruitment. And also looking at how can we actually use this um, sort of graduate program to move beyond the skills? How can we cultivate character, determination, and how can this serve as an incubator to forge successful careers? So a lot of questions were sort of asked on which um, there was a lot to think about. Great, we, we delivered on our campus recruitment promise, and we've got the talent through the door. Next, how do we set these individuals, or how do we set our sights on onboarding these individuals successfully and delivering quicker business results? Just to sort of take a step back again, um, in terms of overall, there were about 327, just to talk about the critical mass over here, there were about 327 individuals from 75 global locations uh, that were brought into uh, the class of 2015. They were from around the world, and they were all heading to New York for their initial onboarding. The mission that was provided was to assist these new graduates to transition from university and to assimilate them to professional life. So that's like most programs. The additional statement added to uh, the mission was the areas of focus. And again, like a, a, a transitioning from university to, care, to corporate is something that almost every organization sort of thinks about. But what they sort of looked at was to come up uh, with new, you could sort of say, of challenges or come up with innovative ways to get these graduates or to accelerate the pace at which these graduates were becoming efficient or what's the term used these days, um, desk ready. So um, there were various elements um, that had to be sort of taken into consideration. The challenges um, was uh, quite a lot, again, coming from Centified global locations, the logistics alone was uh, proving to be a bit of a nightmare. But that was part of the brief. That is something we had to deal with. So, next step, let's build the vision. And uh, like most organizations, we started, uh, or our clients started, building on that vision. What exactly do we want to achieve? And that vision was going to serve as the you could see the foundation on which the program was going to be designed and, and, and then sort of developed. And, and they started looking at turning graduate onboarding uh, from its traditional sense of an event that people go to, to a journey instead. So that strong vision focused on winning the hearts and minds um, of these new hires. And the other vision was to build a sense of community, a community that would ultimately bring multiple benefits to not only these, uh, their individuals and their careers, but also for the organization as a whole. The influence, that vision influenced every aspect of, uh, or you could say every decision that was made on design development and delivery. The approach, or you could sort of say that vision, um, supported um, the importance of, or well, supported that entire concept that we needed to build a program that tapped into, you could say, the emotional and social elements um, in onboarding. Not just about skills, but looking at how do we bring these individuals, how do we take them out of their comfort zone, but also how do we ensure that they are truly connected to the messages that we want to put forward to them. So let me give you a quick snapshot of what that solution looked like. So 
Yes, there were. It started with pre-program, looking at how we engage these individuals from the moment they got their their offer letters. And again, there was a range of content that we provided to engage and, and, and sort of uh, get them excited about the program through to the global initial training. But then it moved beyond that summer program to looking at what happened after that, from 100 days to action learning pro projects to a, a spring development program. It's a year-long development cycle. So let's take our time, but um, sort of use various elements. Let's support these individuals as they move from uh, what you would say campus to, to sort of corporate life. Now, yes, with that entire extended journey, um, coming from 75 different locations, there was a bit of technology used to sort of support the initiative. And that engagement portal was very important from, and it sort of used multiple learning mediums to, to engage different types of learners. Um, let's have a look at the, the design stage. And I guess what was very important for us was learning from the past. Um, in the prior years, the programs were very much focused on skills. They have a sort of traditional approach to um, what you would say graduate onboarding. It was very important for us to sort of understand where we had come from. But, and as a result of, uh, you know, sort of understanding, there was a lot of time that was invested with managers and looking at prior years analysts globally to understand what elements of the prior programs are successful, but also to understand what changes need to happen, uh, happen moving forward. So there was a range of focus groups, surveys, informal conversations, um, which all sort of happened. And that investment, by studying the past, um, that investment paid off because that set the foundation on which, or you could sort of say, that set the business case for change. Um, and that sort of those conversations also help build connections and a foundation of a community um, on which which actually led to the success of the 2015 initiative. In the past, program topics were delivered through, as I sort of mentioned earlier, through traditional means, lectures, traditional workshops. Interactions between the groups was limited, given that cohorts moved from one class to uh, another class without any interaction. Learning was developed conceptually. It was very theoretical. There was no linkages between what they were sort of learning and the business. There was no process to sort of support managers or understand, uh, to sort of ensure that managers understood what learning uh, was taking place uh, for their, their sort of uh, new hires. And the other point that I'm going to come back to, the program was looked at as an event that these graduates went to, period. It started and ended. Their development journey started and ended with that event. So moving forward on which these a new set of objectives were sort of built and established. Uh, objectives that sort of looked at elements such as, yes, we need to educate them, but we need to build community. We need to provide a safe um, sort of space or an incubator to help promote success from day one. We need to cultivate characters and other values. We also need to, well, ultimately deliver on what we have promised these new graduates. There were three things that we focused on when it came to developing or creating or designing this holistic program. And they sort of, um, well, to, to sort of run them, or run through them. Well, the first one was provide challenging learning experiences that energize, engage, and fuel this group. Provide major development themes connected to each other and linked to future development, giving these participants a sense of, of connection, uh, a view that uh, give them a, a sort of a snapshot of their future development pathway. And lastly, build a positive learning community program with a focus on three things. Provide challenging experiences to energize, engage, and fuel this group build on major development competency themes and, and connect these to each other and link them to future development, give these graduates a snapshot of what their future is going to look like. And lastly, foster a positive learning community. Help them forge strong connections. Coming back to that aspect of winning hearts and minds of our audience, it was very important for us to sort of personalize the learning, but also personalize the learning. And that means recognizing 
that each and every one of these individuals uh, would have their own preferences, their own reasons for being at the organization, and, and being able to adapt those learning experiences to those individuals. Okay, um, in terms of going back to that brief of those three key objectives, the immersive case studies and group projects um, are just a few examples of, of what we sort of did. The case study focused on real life um, scenarios set in a market context. Um, to sort of, and we use these case studies to introduce the interpersonal skills, communication, and kind service fundamentals. Pre previously, all of this was taught in a sort of classroom setting. But we were using these simulations and these case studies and these scenarios to bring to life the content, to give them, uh, again, and create experiences that graduates can sort of relate to, win their hearts and minds. The group project, you know, is not a, a new concept. Um, and there was a sense of risk as to whether we are going to give them enough time to, or, uh, well, it was one thing to create the safe environment, but we were, were we giving them enough time to practice their skills? And, and that was part of the, the sort of at the design stages that we had to look, create um, these environments. Let's just figure out what we want to do in these environments, but also give the individuals enough time to sort of practice what they um, needed to uh, to sort of learn and apply. The other aspect was looking at multiple stakeholders. We wanted to make learning stick. And in most models, you would have the graduate at the center of that development journey. So yes, they were right at the top. They were the focus. But we believed that this program had to be an integrated feature. So we had to draw clear lines of engagement between um, not just the subject matter experts, but looking at the L&D team, the line manager, and the graduate, and all the lines of connectivity between them. Um, one of the elements that came out during the research phase of the program was that uh, it was often mentioned that it takes a village to effectively, effectively bring new graduate hires. Part of fostering that connection is to, well, uh, and something that we took back to the design stage was this sense of community the concept of we together will learn, we together will transition, we together shall develop. Um, another element perhaps not included um, within this um, sort of slide was looking at prior year analysts as well. Those cohorts were a very important aspect of uh, what you would see um, the graduate's journey. We included new hires from prior programs and got them to support these graduates. The last bit, again, was the piece of technology. And um, again, um, I, as we sort of said, we, we needed technology because we had 75 global locations and over 327 graduates. But we used technology not only to sort of manage the logistics, but we used the technology to create this multi-layered program, to create this multi-layers of communication, commu uh, sort of community collaboration, and so on. Your learning moved from this push to sort of demand-driven learning pull. Um, the topics were initiated by trainers, but there was a development dialogue that continued after the classroom as well. There was a, a large library of content that was sort of provided to them, but there was also this aspect of uh, personalizing the learning to specific functions, groups, individuals, and so on. Content curation uh, was key. It wasn't about uh, investing large amounts of money um, into this particular platform. It was a, but using the simplistic platform to curate some of the content that already existed within the organization, but curating some of the best content that existed on the web already. What we were trying to do with this uh, sort of learning portal was, as the title suggests, building an ecosystem where we could sort of support that those lines of engagement between multiple stakeholders but also uses to blur the boundaries of the 70-20-10 model. Continued learning and engagement was key. The little and often principle was important. And that enabled to sort of create a program, a supportive program, um, where learning was sustained and behaviors to change. Uh, you could sort of say we were giving them their opportunity to learn over time. The little and often principle was very important to us. 
some just to give you an example there were um, discussion forums or threaded discussions um, where ongoing dialogues were were sort of used to help uh, reinforce the understanding and appreciation of you know their particular job so it wasn't just about learning the content let's talk about this content after the program and these threaded discussions were initiated by subject matter experts external as well as internal subject matter experts the other piece we used the technology for was interactivity using this piece of technology to support individuals as they go back to their 75 and sort of global locations providing them with a platform to reconnect with each other um, post program um, there was a large amount of peer-to-peer -peer content that was developed which supported the current cohort but also served as gold dust for the future cohorts. Great content. And where does that sort of leave us? Well, we've got a large amount of digital footprints that have been gathered um, over um, what you would say this particular initiative and which is also going to form the hypothesis for the performance of an, an understanding uh, of future groups. We were able to build things such as skills maps, looking at activity, looking at periods and times of engagement, uh, but various elements that will help us provide better mediation and support for graduates as they, they get onto the program. We were also using the data to support the existing cohort because that helped us to, to sort of delve a bit deeper into not just test results, but various other results in terms of activity, in terms of behaviors demonstrated and so on. So where, what next? So you know, we've achieved a, a bronze-winning program, uh, an award-winning program. Great. Where do we take this program? Or well, what's next in uh, our journey? What's going to get us to that gold medal? And I think where we are at the moment, and the, the vision that we've set over the next four years of uh, what you would say development, the structure is on creating a program that is connected, that goes beyond its traditional onboarding of new hires to perhaps delving a bit deeper into the intern population, looking at the campus recruitment side of it. How can this engagement extend beyond the intern experience and beyond the first year sort of experience? So apart from the mindset shift that we've managed to achieve, um, there are a couple of areas that we're working on at the moment there's something we're working on called the Keeping Warm strategy, which sort of looks at from when individuals receive their offer or from interns to, to offer, what can we do to keep these individuals warm, keep them connected? Is there, how can we continue that dialogue? But also from internship to offer how, and then beyond, so from offer through to graduate development, again, what can we do to keep them connected? Um, strategy after that is to sort of look at beyond these two initiatives, beyond the intern experience and beyond the first year. How can we successfully prepare these individuals and the employees as a whole to ensure that they are, what you would say, constantly supported and constantly provided with support to succeed. And I'd end this presentation, this rather short presentation on the voices. The feedback that we got from the graduates was phenomenal. And the key takeaways that came from the, uh, what you would say from the program in terms of its delivery structure was this case study and simulation driven um, sort of sessions. So use those scenarios to introduce your topics, use those scenarios to bring it to life. The other aspect that was extremely strong, and again, goes back to that aspect of winning um, our hearts and minds, was a sense of community. that We worked together collectively as a group, and we built great networks and great relationships, cross-border relationships, that um, will increase our chances and support our, our what you would say, our, our onboarding into the organization. Um, the, that sense of community was key to um, the entire program, building that successful network. And with that, I come to the end of my rather short presentation, and I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, and yes, if you do have any further questions, feel free um, to either contact me uh, at, um, my, on my email, hexapain at alphadevelopment.com. We're more than happy to delve a bit deeper into this case study and talk about critical aspects of design, development, and delivery. If you'd like more information about the case studies, please do get in touch with us. 
thank you so much for attending this presentation and I look to see you all soon. Bye for now.